Hey you guys, in today's video, I will show you how you can easily download Open Lightspeed in just a few clicks. We're gonna be using Vulture Cloud Host. However, there should be one-click installations for all of these different cloud hosts. I'm also gonna show you how to configure a domain and how you can access PHP My Admin. If you don't know what Open Lightspeed is, it's basically WordPress on steroids. It's 300 times faster than regular WordPress. And Vulture has an insane promotion right now where you can get a $300 free trial simply by clicking the link down below. The link will bring you to this page and then you can click the avatar up here in the menu and go ahead and click sign up, put in an email password and click create a free account and you will have a $300 free trial. Once you've signed up in the Vulture dashboard, you're gonna wanna go to the menu and click the deploy button and then click deploy new server. And then you're gonna choose a server type. I'm gonna click Cloud Compute Shared CPU to save some money. And then I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna pick a location, for example, Silicon Valley, United States. And then I'm gonna choose my image. I'm gonna go ahead and click Marketplace App and go ahead and select Open Lightspeed WordPress. Then I'll scroll down and I'll select the server size I want. I'll just keep it as is, $12 a month. Sounds good to me and I will disable auto backups. I will handle backups myself. I understand the risk, disable auto backups, and I will scroll down and I will go ahead and put in a host name. And for the host name, I'm gonna put in the domain I'm gonna use that will connect to the server. And that is lucky28.link. And I will go ahead and click deploy now. It's gonna take about a minute or two to completely deploy. And now you can see that the server is running. And now we're gonna log into our domain register. I use Namecheap. We're gonna set the DNS servers to point to Vulture. So where it says name servers here under my domain, I'm gonna click custom DNS and I'm gonna type ns1.vulture.com and ns2.vulture.com and then I'm gonna click this green check mark to save it. And now my name servers are pointed to Vulture. It says it may take up to 48 hours to take effect. However, it usually takes effect in just a few minutes. Now we need to connect the domain name in Vulture. So we're gonna go and click network in the sub menu and we're gonna go ahead and click DNS, then click add domain, and then type in your domain and go ahead and select the server and go ahead and click add. And then if you'd like to add optional support for www, you can add www here, and then you can copy your server address and put it in this data field, and then go ahead and click the plus sign to add records. And that way your domain will work with www and without www. Now, if we go back to our dashboard and we copy this IP address, and we paste it in the browser, you will see a page that looks like this. And if we put our domain name in the browser, you will see the same exact page. Now we need to log into our server, configure the HTTPS and finish setting up the website. So all you need to do is click the server name and we'll have the server details right here that we can use to log in. That's our username is root and our password's right here. We can click copy password. If you used an SSH key, don't worry about copying the password. Then we're gonna open up a terminal and type SSH root at, and then our IP address, and then type yes, and then go ahead and enter the password. And then the script will begin to run and we need to give it some input. So it's asking us what our domain is. So I'm gonna put lucky28.link and then it's showing me my domain and it says please verify it is correct and we're going to go ahead and type y it's asking us if we wish to issue a let's encrypt certificate that will give us ssl and https so we're going to go ahead and hit y again it's now asking us for an email so i will do tutorial at lucky 28.link go ahead and hit enter and then hit Y to verify my email is correct. And then it will start to install the SSL certificate. It says the certificate has been successfully installed and it's asking us if we wanna do an HTTPS rewrite. 
which basically means if we want to force all traffic to be HTTPS, I want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Y. And then it's asking us if we want to update the system. Now we're going to go ahead and click Y again. And it says update starting and shows us the percentage. It may take a minute or two and the update has been completed. And if you type your domain name in the browser, it will now automatically redirect to HTTPS. The SSL certificate has been successfully installed and now we are on the WordPress installation. We're gonna go ahead and select our language and press continue. And then we're gonna put in our site title. For example, I'll just do tutorial. And then we're gonna put in our username. I'll just do hello and then it will automatically set a password for us. However, we can choose our own custom password. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in our email. And then you can check this box if you don't want the search engines to start indexing your site. And then you can go ahead and click install WordPress. And then we're gonna go ahead and log in. And you can see we have successfully logged in. And you can see in the sidebar, the Lightspeed Cache plugin has already been pre-installed. We're going to go ahead and click it. And then if we click presets, it will show us five different caching presets that the Lightspeed team created themselves. This is the recommended one. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply preset and then go ahead and click continue. And now if we scroll down here and we look at history, you can see applied the advanced recommended preset one second ago. And now if we go to our domain again, you'll see that the WordPress site has been installed and everything is working flawlessly. If we type in our domain and then slash PHP my admin, we'll have access to PHP my admin. However, we do need the username and password. Let me go ahead and show you how to get that. Go back to your terminal and if you scroll all the way up, it will show you instructions on how to get various different passwords. For example, this command right here. I can go ahead and just type it. We're going to do sudo space cat. Cat will allow us to read a file and then dot db underscore password. We're going to hit enter. And then this is our root MySQL password. And this is our WordPress MySQL password. We're going to want to go ahead and grab the root MySQL password. We're going to go ahead and copy that. And then we're going to go back to PHP my admin. And we're going to put root for the username and then paste the password and hit log in. And now if we click WordPress in the side menu in PHP my admin, it will pull up all our database tables. We can click a table to view the data, for example, the users table, and you can see our user account that we created. And Open Lightspeed also has a back end. You probably don't need to change anything, but if you do want to access it or play around with it, let me go ahead and show you how to get there. First, you need to get the password. So we're going to do sudo cat and then lightspeed underscore password and hit enter. And it will show us our admin password. And to access the back end, we'll need to put in our domain and then a colon and then 7080 because that's the port it runs on and then press enter. However, you're going to see it doesn't load. And that's because we need to allow access to this port. And it's not super secure to have this port open to the public. So it's recommended that you whitelist just your IP address with the firewall. So we're going to do sudo and then UFW and then allow from and then our IP address will go right here. I'm going to go ahead and just put a fake IP address, but you want to put your actual real IP address. And if you don't know it, you can just search what's my IP on Google and you'll find it. And then you're going to put two and then any and then port 7080 and go ahead and hit enter. And it says rule has been added. And if you want to allow all IP addresses temporary, you can do sudo UFW allow and then 7080 and hit enter. And it says rule added. Now, if we go back to our browser and refresh the page, we should be able to access it. We do need to add an exception. This is a self-signed certificate. So we're going to go ahead and accept the risk and continue. Now we're going to go back to our terminal and we're going to go ahead and copy this password. And then we're going to put the username as admin, paste the password, go ahead and click login to open Lightspeed. 
and you can see we have successfully logged in to the Open Lightspeed dashboard. If we click server configuration, we can see a bunch of different variables. And once you finish playing around, you're gonna to wanna to go back to the terminal. And we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and delete those rules so nobody can access the Open Lightspeed dashboard. And we're gonna do pretty much the same exact thing. So we did sudo ufw allow 7080. And all we need to do is add delete, and that will delete the rule. And if you whitelisted an IP address, you'll need to do sudo ufw delete and then allow from and then your IP address to any port 7080 and hit enter. And you can see the rules have been deleted. And we can verify that by typing sudo ufw status. And you can see there's no longer any rules with 7080. And just to be safe, we can do sudo ufw reload, and it says firewall reloaded. Now, if we come back to our website and we refresh, it's going to just load, load until it times out because the port 7080 has now been blocked. However, you can see our normal website is working just fine. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.